also that is highly involved in a lot of our upper limb rehab. Um, so if you picture it as that like knife-like muscle, you can see in bodybuilders with that serrated edge. You can get an idea that it's pretty much in that mid-axillary line that we were talking about before you get the line and that continuous, it's almost like a continuous chain, it's just the fiber directions going away. Like, um, Heckmeyer's doing like vertical and straight and Sanchez wrapping around the ribs. So if you picture it like a, almost like, you know, when people tape up their ribs after a rib injury, it's wrapping around the rib cage, staying on the, on the thoracic cage to get to the medial border of the scapula. So it's in the perfect position to pull that shoulder blade forward. So assessment-wise, I mean, we're not too worried about, in, in most patients, you're not too worried about seeing them put their arm behind their back and it winging right off like you see with the nerve palsy. It's more about, we were talking about before, these 17 muscles that control position in the shoulder blade. If it's just not firing properly or if it's not strong, or the person doesn't have the motor program or the motor control to use their straight the anterior, it might just affect that rotation and tipping and winging of the shoulder blade a little bit to cause some sort of repetitive use strain in the shoulder, like that bicep, or something like that. So teaching the person how to use it is important. So even like our, our resistant muscle test that we're going to use, just that scapular protraction, retraction, just that scapular punch. Teaching someone to do that without just, you know, hiking up with the traps and coming forward by creating a big kyphosis, just having control over the shoulder blade is big. And that, that line we're talking about, that connection between the external oblique and up into the straight center, this is where your, your fascial connections become important. Anyone that uh, either has a slip and fall and their arm goes way back behind them, or uh, I've seen one time a guy fell off a motorcycle and got his arm down and his arm shot back, or even just a tennis player going up for a sewer. That transition where external oblique kind of blends into straight and center is a common spot where it tears. So they might come in and worry about rib pain. But if you can block that area, so let's say there's pain here and there's pain to the touch, but it's right on the insertion more serratus and the external oblique are coming in, so it hurts, and it even hurts to breathe because those muscles get tension when they, when they breathe. If you have pain, let's say external oblique, and if I kind of do like a pec maneuver, but as he pulls the arm down, he's kind of going into a crunch at the same time, right? So you can just resist the arm, and you're still going to get contraction of the external oblique in a bracing like fashion, right? So if it hurts, if I push here and resist and it hurts, now you know, okay, it hurts there, but it's like a the muscle. If you can create a block, almost like a tennis elbow, like um, a counter force brace that you wear. So you put a brace on, now the pain goes away because the muscle pulls in the brace. If it hurts here, I can create a, a block with my hands here and repeat. And if the pain improves, then it's more likely to be muscular because now the muscle can insert on the hand rather than inserting on the rib. So you still might get some pain, but if it's like 50, 60, less then you know you've just blocked some of the muscle so you know it's more of a muscle strain slash tear than a rib injury okay but getting back to palpation when you look at this when, when you have the patient in this position you can do it supine or like this you, you have the, the shoulder blade here and we know how to find the pec tissue here you know it's going in between the shoulder blade and the pec wrapping around the thorax right so it's starting here coming up this way trying to get under the under the scapula to get to the medial border of the scapula. So when you just put your hand here, and you're on that thoracic cage, you're flipping over perpendicular to serratus anterior. Right? Pardon me? Well, Terry's gonna be coming up the other surface of the shoulder blade, coming up this way. So if I'm in the axilla, this part of my hand here is gonna be on Terry's, but I'm, I'm on the rib cage. So on the underside here, if I get on, if I grip the scapula, my fingers are now on the tissue of subscap. But if I go back onto the thoracic cage, I'm on the straight anterior. Back. Okay, so if I have them in this position, you retract a little bit with a straight arm, almost like you're doing a bench press and push forward, and you have to relax. Just do it again. You can feel that tissue tighten. It's not going to pop up because it's a sheet like muscle. Relax, continue. It's going to pop up underneath your fingers. You're gonna, sorry, it's going to tense up underneath your fingers. Okay. And if you lay on your back, and you're holding his arm this way. Now everything's loose, you're using your layering technique again. So I'm, I'm protracting it to loosen up the pack and just to get the shoulder blade loose so I can I have control over them. If you try and loop under the under the shoulder blade, this way under the scapula, right now I'm pushing down into the, the rotator cuff, into the subscap. So if you change your direction and try and get underneath the uh, 
the thoracic cage, and your fingers in between the scapula and thoracic cage, you're following that serratus anterior around the back, around the thoracic cage. In a perfect, healthy situation, you should be able to get good separation between the thoracic cage and the scapula. When you move the arm, you should be able to feel your fingers stay in there. It shouldn't feel like a vice effect, like everything's just squishing down on you. But a lot of people that have either bad posture or repetitive strain from overhead movement, this whole area gets very adhesed, and you feel like you can't get in there, just like that dissection where that guy was pulling the first layer of fascia off and everything was all adhered to the next level. It's almost like you're, you're like breaking up that with your fingers. So you get in between there, and you, just, you don't have to push hard, you don't have to dig deep. You just try and move the arm and try and force your fingers in between those two layers. You're not trying to directly treat the subscap, you're not trying to directly treat the serratus. You're just trying to fit your hand in there. You're just trying to slowly, and you can't rip in there. you got to just slowly ease in there like you're breaking some of that fuzz every time you go through. Okay? So in this position, you get the straightest to contract just by trying to do like a bench press maneuver, just try and get the shoulder off the table by bringing the shoulder blade around the body and then let it come down in retraction and protract. And in some people, this is beautiful push up, you feel it contract. You feel the, your, your hand sinks deeper into the axilla and you feel the muscle tension. And in some people, this is really hard to do. People that have bad desk posture, let's say, it's really hard for them to figure out how to act through the straightest anterior when they get very bad forward and posture around the shoulders. So this is always part of the rehab program for any upper cross type situation or any overhead athlete like say athletes have an ankle tear or any type of impingement. Getting control and stability over that shoulder blade is very important. If you think about all the muscles that connect from the shoulder blade to the arm, like involving uh, shoulder rotation, shoulder movement, anchor on the shoulder blade, right? Rotator cuff wise. So if they have their attachment on the shoulder blade and they go to contract to move the arm, the shoulder blade's not stable. It wings or slides or protracts or retracts. It's just like sitting at a table and going to move your chair and you pull on the table but the table slides instead of the chair. You can't generate strength if what you're pulling on is moving. So if the person doesn't know how to stabilize their scapula and then rotate the arm, as they go to rotate the arm, the shoulder blade moves with it, you functionally get less power, less strength, or just a compensation pattern in your practice. So the person needs to learn how to stabilize your scapula and straight as it's a huge part of that. So you can't just treat it without trying to help them fix why it why got uh, this way in the first place. So most of the time it's just a lack of stability. People hike all the time. Just like a swimmer when they enter the water, you can pull and you can propel yourself by rotating the arm and using your subscap, let's say. But then eventually, when you're hiking, you get a swimmer shoulder, or you can enter the water and pull with your lap, right? But in order to pull with your lap, lower trap needs to stabilize the shoulder blade, the straightest anterior needs to stabilize the shoulder blade, and the lap brings the arm And if the shoulder blade's moving with it, you know it's going to be high. So anyone that comes in and then hikes and rotates isn't even using their lap. So it's going to be one of these people that swim all the time that have some of the lap and they're going to be swimming because it's a big wing of the back. They know that they're using proper form. So any of your swimmers that come in the track, they just hit the water with them, run the bike, they just go do their work at 5 in the morning, they'll think about what they're doing. Just watch, just have their arm up here and push against and show me how do you pull in the water, where do you go first. A lot of times you see that. And it might be their coach telling them to get a high elbow, but even with a high elbow, you still extend and pull with the lap. So just going to make sure and teach them how to pull with the lap, make sure the straightest is stabilized and sure the lower. But it can be even just a factory work. It's the same concept.